Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Pints and Courts with from Craft Beer Nation. I am Matt Miller and I'm joined with a special panel tonight. We've got uh, some regulars, Lola Laracy and Gil Mello. And uh, we also have a special guest from craftbeveragejobs.com. We have Cindy Mulchaney. And we're going to talk for about, oh, for half of the show, let's say, about some of the things that Cindy's doing with the website and those kind of, that kind of fun information. And then we're going to go over our normal news. So, without any hesitation, let's dive right in. Uh, Cindy, please spend uh, 15 minutes giving us a dissertation of the last 10 years of your life. <laughs> no, welcome. Welcome to Thanks the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is fun. Thanks. Well, good. So, so it's a website. It's a jobs website, right? So it is. I work in the railroad industry, and there's railjobs.org and railjobs.com and whatnot. So this is a this is a a job website for craft beverages, right? Right. I, I, I misread that as beer at first until I spent some time on the website and realized that it's also for uh, coffee and wine and beer. Yep, right. cider and kombucha. Cider. Yeah, mead. So we're, we uh, we launched on April first of this year. Um, my background is in wine, specifically mar wine marketing out here in California. And then in the last couple of years, I've kind of segued into craft beer as well, um, mostly in social media. And so it's kind of a culmination. It kind of happened because of those two worlds that I have been involved in and then the fact that I've always kind of been sort of a helper of friends and family and coworkers get jobs. I would work on people's resumes and help them with cover letters and it was just always something I really enjoyed so I kind of had this I always wanted to have an online business and something that complement my social media work online and one day it kind of came to me and a couple months later I had a website so that's about it well fantastic so yeah. your background is in wine marketing is there is there a bit of a wine market out there in California I there's a little one <laughs> a little one. Yeah. I wasn't quite aware if it was all. Do they make yet. wine in California <laughs> yeah a little bit yeah I'm kind of I'm kind of on the um I live in Santa Cruz, which ha we have a great little wine community here in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and very eclectic and very independent spirit. We're definitely not Napa and Sonoma, um, but in the last couple of years, especially, you know, the craft brewers in the community um, have been just blowing up, and there's a little area called kind of the west end of Santa Cruz, and it's, you know, breweries and wineries and distilleries all in one block, and so it's kind of like our own little fermentation district, and it's, it's pretty awesome. So, yeah. well, interesting, and uh -huh. I I know now that there are craft sauerkraut. There's a there are farms oh, no. that are <laughs> there are farms that are doing fermentation, special fermentations on their sauerkraut. So we've got it's one so, here in Charleston. It's just so hipster, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I, I need to move to Cali. You can't eat that without a jacket with with uh, patches on the elbows. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a bit too specialized. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe. So how close do you work with those business like craft beer breweries and you know? Do, you, do they send you all that information? You have to go search for it? That, how how does the, that work? For the jobs? Uh, yes. Yeah, so you know, right now we're in business development mode, just getting the word out. We are very um, willing and able to post the jobs for employers. We're, we're still in the proving concept phase for them. You know, we just today actually we reached a huge milestone. Um, we For the first time since we launched, we surpassed, I think it's, we're over a thousand unique visitors to our site just today alone. So that was like really exciting because we've only been around for four months. Um, so as we get more and more traffic, I think more and more employers are going to see that we are offering something of value. And you know, people that have skills related to, you know, brewing beer, you know, are also interested in making cider or making wine. And there's a lot of crossover. And I think the industry, up until this point, the, all of those craft industries and beverage industries, they don't talk to each other, and that translates actually over into laws too. So I'm kind of a passionate person when it comes to the whole promoting the category together. You know, my favorite quote in the last couple of months is um, a rising tide floats all boats. So, you know, we are a job board and we want to promote jobs in this industry, but, but kind of the who I am and what I do professionally fundamentally is, is promote beverages. So it kind of goes hand in hand. So it's been fun. So we do... Um, not only on the job boards or on the job postings we do, but we do, you know, featuring the employers behind them and their story and talking about how, you know, craft beer is grown in their community. So it's it's kind of a neat little niche we're carving. Yeah, I saw your um, hangout with the guy, uh, with the folks from uh, Full's team, and I thought oh, that yeah. was a pretty good idea. I mean, it was yeah. as if I'm looking for a job, it was nice to see the guy who's 
possibly I could work for. Yeah, it was you got to kind of meet Sean and kind of get a sense of what their culture's like and he gave some awesome tips in that hangout of what he's looking for. I don't think that anyone really would have that insight um into a job if if they didn't hear it from, you know, the horse's mouth so to speak. So, we actually had applications come in on the site that said I watched the hangout and I want to work for this company. So, that was really cool. So they did, I want to work for that company. I know, right? <laughs> did they fill that job? They did. We yeah, we just found out yesterday that they filled it. They actually, I, from I didn't talk to Sean directly. Uh, my business partner did, but um, I guess they actually found two positions. So they they kind of there was a lot of interest in their company, and they're a huge, awesome North Carolina brewery in in terms of popularity. So I'm not surprised that they got so much attention. Right. Matthew and I were there just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, we okay. Were, yeah. yeah. I'm a big fan. It was good. Oh, good. So we liked the ginger beer, and there was some kind of smoky thing that was pretty flippin' delicious, too. Kills yeah, everybody's they're... palate. Yeah, yeah. It ruined everybody's palate, but it was smoky. <laughs> it was good. Um, well, you know, what's kind of interesting here, I guess, is that I'm an IT guy, and I've mm-hmm. been in IT for 20 years or so now, and uh, off and on. I did some publishing for a while, too, but... Um, if I am looking for a job, I'm not going to Monster Jobs. I'm not going to the newspaper. I'm going to Dice because mm-hmm. Dice is established as where IT people get jobs. So I, there isn't that for this very, very specified, yeah. very detail-oriented, you know, specific job job description. So I, I hope I, you know I think you've got a good niche here. Thanks. And, yeah. And, I, and I, I'd like to. I'm looking forward to seeing it grow. Yeah, uh, it's it's really exciting. I mean, we definitely there is competition for us. There are other job boards out there online just for beverages specifically. Not, you know, they're kind of not discriminatory about what how what size. We do, you know, want to kind of definitely have the intention to keep it focused on the small business owner and the craft market. Um, but what I think stands us kind of puts us apart is that we are focused on the social aspect and the brand promotion aspect. You know, we're, we're going to bat for employers and we're going to bat for the the job seekers, and we're going to try and do our best to com- to connect everyone. So it's been a lot of fun, more well, fun than I even thought it was going to be. Well, good. I see right now here on your website there are two jobs, and I don't, I haven't clicked through to really know how to tell if they're still open. I guess they're still open if they're listed here. Is how it works. Yeah, you know that's a good question. Uh, the employer has the capability of going on and, and closing the job if they fill it. Good. So I think good. that's happened once, maybe twice in the last four months. All so right. technically, it is still available. Yeah. So here in the last uh, in the last week, you've got uh, two jobs at uh, Dogfish Head, fifty fifty Brewing, which I haven't heard, but it looks like they're looking for an assistant, uh, brewery assistant, so somebody to wash the kegs. Which I guess you got to start somewhere, right? Got to. So, yeah, that's right. You know. So uh, uh, beer works. There's a couple of stone jobs in Escondido. So uh, you know yeah. that's. That is pretty interesting. I, li- I like the, I like the web design. I like the web page. And you you did this really cool, uh, f- like a flipboard. Where is it? Uh, yeah, it's on the sidebar. You can go, uh, out of, which I, I think it's flipboard.com forward slash craft beverage jobs. But yeah, my one of my business partners is really savvy with with uh, flipboard, and he's kind of built this magazine that's just awesome. And tons of people are looking at it, and it's a great kind of way to get all of your craft beverage news. I think yeah. we have you guys on there too, don't we? I think. As a matter of fact, account. our our famous uh, our famous faces are are yeah. listening, shining yeah. there. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if and uh, Gil has been uh, crazy about writing articles, so uh, oh good, he's well, going to have all kinds of content there. So, so I guess it just picks up RSS feeds and and dumps them into the the Flipboard content. I, I sadly am not a Flipboard person. I don't know about it. So. Yeah, I have it on my Android. I like yeah. it. Yeah, no, actually, it's manual, so we look at every article before we techni- quote-unquote flip it in, so it's not, uh-huh. yeah, we look, I mean, we have an RSS feed that we kind of pull from, and we add sources to it on occasion, but we really try to make sure that the, the articles are hand-picked. I guess that's good, because, yeah, because someone who makes a great blog today might start dumping junk in there tomorrow, and then right. that would cascade down to you. So. Or the, the blog could just die, and you're stuck with an empty... Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. All right. So you've been in, you've been in business uh, uh, officially since April. April so what 1st. what did you do prior to this? Besides, I mean, did you work for big uh, big wineries or did I mean? No, actually, I'm still employed. This is a uh, kind of my evening thing that I'm working on building up. Um, but I, your audience might be familiar with it. I actually work with um, an organiz- the organization that puts on the beer bloggers conference. 
Um, I was the community manager for Zephyr Adventures and the Beer Bloggers community for two years, and yeah. the wine, wine bloggers community, and we do a food blogger and a, um, and uh, wine tourism, which is an industry conference. So I was doing that uh, up until the spring, and I'm still with the company, but I transitioned roles and I'm kind of building a new brand of their travel company. So I still work for them during the day, and I kind of moonlight on this at night with their blessing, so that's good. Um, and yeah, so it is an of, it is an indirect uh, competition with, for them. So it it, it yeah. this would be a good yeah this well, would be a good start. benefit because they could use your site, right? Yeah, you know, it's there. I kind of purposely I don't want there to be any you know competition or crossover, and and I think everyone's benefiting from you know just if just by growing the industry and having more eyeballs, you know, focusing on the growth. I mean, I think we're going to talk about it coming up next, but. Well, the Brewers Association just announced what did craft beer industry grow 18% this year alone. So there's lots of lots of yeah. room. We just we just here. went over 3,000 brewers in the U.S. So yeah, yeah. It's a lot of brewers there, so it's job that can be created. Yeah. Well, that's that's pretty exciting. So uh, what's next? Just more more steady growth. Well, you know, just yeah. You know, it's kind of funny. I. Uh, the parent, you know, my official LLC corporation is Craft Beverage Media. So we also do, you know, because we started doing all these brand promotions from our job features, um, brands started asking us, well, do you do that, that in general when I don't have a, a position open? So we're actually going to start building up that part of the business and doing brand promotion. And I speak at a lot of conferences and, and just trying to really drive this concept of getting the craft beverage movement working together and going in a forward direction together. So yeah, I mean, being a business owner where I can kind of pivot on a daily basis and decide to do a new project has been really fun. So that's, uh, but yeah, building the job site is definitely priority number one. Well, cool. Well, that's that, that's kind of just what we, you know, at Craft Beer Nation, we yeah. are, we're a nonprofit. And oh, why, okay. why is that, Gil? Because we make no money. <laughs> This is a passion of love. This is yeah. a, a passion here for us. So, uh, so we, but we do the same thing. We just want to be a part of uh, of a vibrant and exciting um, a movement in craft yeah. beer here. So it's fun. Uh, yeah. So and it's fun to to meet other people that are excited about it and trying to find uh, their own way within that. So we definitely yeah. want to support you. Uh, we we, yeah. we talked we talked about maybe we'll just start chiming in at the end of our episodes here each week uh, with a couple of the jobs that are being listed that sound interesting to us. So uh, yeah, I definitely. Yeah. I definitely think the dogfish head jobs sound cool, but I don't think I probably qualify for division sales manager, you know, just because my only experience comes from the glass. But um. well, we we'll focus on finding the cool IT focus position out there. <laughs> oh, that's they, I'll be happy to just wash their kegs. That's fine. yeah. Gil Gil wants to be the brewery assistant somewhere, yeah. so you know. Yeah. <laughs> so he I'll works for he, he works for a nonprofit, so it's probably not much of a pay cut. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, this is exciting. So uh, we're so glad to have you here. Yeah, uh, you. Everybody should go right out right now and look. If you're well, if you're looking for work, even if you're not, the website's still pretty cool. Go to craftbeveragejobs.com. That's hard to say because I'm so used to saying craft beer, but it's craftbeveragejobs.com. I, I, I tricked everybody. Yeah, and if you want to, and it probably because craft beer jobs was taken when you started your search, but uh, craft beverage jobs, and uh, and find yourself a job as a barista somewhere, and then go from go to beer from there. Although I imagine if you're a barista and a brewery assistant, you need both of those jobs to be able to pay the rent in Chicago or something. Probably, so, yeah. So you know, so there's no there's no limit. Just you know, stack them up. So or get just become job wealthy. That's my plan. Or just become wealthy. That, that could be it. That's yeah. the only part of my plan I have so far. Yeah, my, the only my, the only way I can I can make that plan work is with the six numbers that you get on those little slips. That's you. I, I, I'm right. Try and win. Try and win a million dollars on the lottery. It's only. My mother plays the same numbers every week. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Keep waiting. So. All right, so we're so glad to have you here, Sandy. Yeah, thank you. You're going to hang out with us for the next ah. couple of minutes. We're going to talk about the other stories in the news. And Lola found something this week. What did you find, Lola, about Sierra Nevada? Well, credit where credit is due. Gil said he actually wrote some of this article, and it's a very nice article. Um, it looks very good. Um, and it actually goes into what we were talking about a little bit. We were talking about craft jobs, and, of course, this is um, creating some jobs because Sierra Nevada is opening a plant 
or has opened a plant in North Carolina, and they're going to brew their own um, their own brews actually. So it's going to be, I'm guessing, exclusive because it says they're only going to be available in North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, and Georgia, and none of those are the states I live in. So that makes me unhappy. <laughs> But um, the one they're talking about, um, it sounds really good. Um, a rain check spiced stout. It's um, it's inspired. It's going to be a limited release. Is yeah. It? Okay, so I may not get to taste it. I'm trying. I I, I gave a subtle a subtle hint to Ashley to bring it when we see each other um, later in the month. So I don't know if she'll get my hint because I did plus her name. And yeah. Lately, asked for her to bring it, so I, I may have been too subtle. Well, she watches this show, so uh, I think I think you've been plenty direct right now. So <laughs> okay. I so think she will get the hint. Hopefully, she'll get some. But it's inspired by, um, fre- or it has fresh ginger, brown sugar, molasses, and tangy lime. So I don't know how and all that lot- goes together. Oh wow, you had me right up until the lime. I'd be interested. <laughs> as long as it's faint. I mean, it needs to really be faint and maybe just touching the outside of the beer. I don't want it to be like pucker, like oh my lord. I don't know how you'd get. I don't know how you'd get lime. To, I, okay, now I need to go to South Carolina and get some of this. Well, that's to... why we need it. We need to, you know, test this ourselves because otherwise I can't believe it. Yeah, I think what what they've been doing, they've been doing batches of the torpedo, um, and uh, I think they're pale ale, right? And then a couple other beers to make sure that flavors will match their their other breweries. But the the rain check is going to be their it's it's a spiced beer, I think, a spiced stout, and um, it's going to be their first uh, special beer, special release. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, if there are two things I like, they are spiced beers and stouts. So me too, perfect <laughs> together. So Not mix sure them all together, one, but... right? So uh, we were going to talk a little bit about some growler laws changing in Arizona, but Victoria got stuck in traffic and oh. didn't get home in time. So we're going to skip that until next time. But we do, we did want to talk about a new show that that came out this week, and uh, Gil and I were very excited about it because it was re- it's a reality show based in a brewery, oh. you know. So I'm not real crazy about reality TV, and I don't have cable in the house, so I had to go make an effort to go watch it on the internet the day after. But, you know, it's about beer. So I was excited. Gil got me excited. He wrote an article about Hallelujah, another television show about beer. And then we watched it. And, and Gil, what did you think? I just, yeah. It, I, <laughs> I, I, I wrote him. I get excited when there's anything about craft brewery or, you know, like, Cindy's craft beverage jobs. When when we were getting into social media and it was start hitting out hitting out of medias, and I was very excited. And then I watched that, and I was like, "Is that Duck Dynasty inside of a brewery or something?" Because all they did is machinery and building stuff, and there's almost nothing about craft beer at all. It was kind of disappointing. It was a lot down for me. You know, I don't want to bash the show, but I. I do at the same time. Let, let's not compare Dark Horse Nation to craftbeveragejobs.com. Because when, no, 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 no. when you go to craftbeveragejobs.com, guess what they have there? They have <laughs> jobs to do with craft beverages. We, I watched the, the episode. I think it was the second one. It must have run two episodes the first night there. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I watched the one where they made a shanty, um, an ice shanty, that they pulled out onto the ice with a snowmobile or a snow track device. And uh, it was... I mean, it's been a while since I've watched reality reality TV, and there's a good cause that it will be a long time until I watch it again. It was a, it was more a show about fabricating this part that was broken on this bottling line, and hmm. it was really they really forced they they really invented the drama, you know, and lots it, of. Go ahead. Was it A and E? Was no, uh, no it's Esquire. Oh, okay. No, no, Squire is the brew dog. This is actually oh. on a history channel. Oh, which the history. Uh, okay. yeah, which apparently doesn't show any kind of history anymore. But. Well, I guess it's history in that maybe it was filmed two months ago or something. Well, yeah. no, I think they just use their format. Like, they are doing. They do all the show, three odd show around a bunch of people. They focus on the people and, and, and crazy things they do aside of their business. And I think that was the thing that really uh, upset me because, you know, uh, there's nothing about breweries just because they're in a small town and they do all crazy sh- shooting guns and which I have nothing yeah. against, but you know that's that's not what I want to watch when I think about craft beer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just yeah. Just don't lose. If I I hate to do that to a show, and I, I you know I'm sorry for the guys from the Dark Horse, but 
the show as a letdown. If, <laughs> if you're looking for a, a craft beer show, don't lose your time. If you're looking for another reality show, yeah, maybe yeah. that's that's for you. It sounds more like a workplace drama. It's exactly what it is. Any workplace. Mm -hmm. Right. You could you could substitute that brewery for motorcycle shop or duck call manufacturing. They really yeah. absolutely wanted to try and go after that. And yeah. um and the beer guy in me was very disappointed. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Um in the good beer news, speaking of beer factories, um a Stone announced I guess a week and a half ago now that they're going to build a brewery in Berlin. And oh. I am so anxious to know if they're going to make any kind of lagers or not. But uh, mm -hmm. those Germans and the and the Europeans like their lagers. So right. Well, have you guys well, been following no, the, their, yeah. their the first beer is going to be from their. Sorry, go ahead, Cindy. Oh no, I I thought. We, have you guys followed their crowdfunding campaign and they're kind of backpedaling on uh on their crowdfunding campaign? Oh, no. They no. got a lot of. Yes. Yeah, so, well, I mean, they still are doing it, but. I, there was a lot of flack that they received because, you know, they're big stone brewery. Why do they need to, to tap their fans to pay for a new brewery? They should be able to do it themselves. <laughs> and so but they're, they're giving their money back into yeah, gift cards yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But I guess a lot, there was quite a bit of noise, and, and uh, I thought their response was pretty good. They, they are making, they're sweetening the pot for people that want to help them. So yeah. I'm cool. get something back. I'm all for Kickstarter yeah. or things like that yeah. because you're usually actually it, it, buying something. You know, I hate when when everybody else can do all this marked stunt and things and nobody cares. It, it, if it's if it's something like craft beer, then all of a sudden everybody gets on their case. You know, there's still yeah. a business. You know, it's an art, but it's still a business. There. But I think that I think the crowd I think the crowdfunding thing is going to have to change real quick because even I am really tired of. You know, uh, what, what, didn't they have something like the Woot Stout 3.0? Just fund us here, and then you get a Woot Stout 3.0. And I thought, really, you you got to go through all these hoops to get a special beer. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It it just kind of it seems cheap, and it seems like there you, people instead of Cindy's got a great idea for a website needs a couple thousand bucks to get it off the ground. Let's do this instead. It's like, well, if you want to be super elite and and get a limited edition pocket watch then buy come fund my kickstarter and I'll send them to you. I don't know. And, and I think I, I think the plan they're going to renovate at this old 1900 uh it, I think it was some gas company or something and it's going to cost 25 million to renovate the place. Yeah. So they need another $100,000 from me <laughs> or me and you yeah. so I don't think so. Yeah, and they they're doing that. What's that groundbreaking collapse? They they've been doing for a while now, and they, I think they're gonna do one with A. Smithson. And I, they come in those a liter and a half bottles, and that's what they're releasing at that brewery. That's gonna be their first beers. Um, All right. Well, some of you are better informed than me. Then I just I it left a sour taste in my mouth how that how that was kind of coming out. But I am excited. I am excited that that American craft beer is going to Europe instead of. The reverse happening, uh, as well as the reverse happening. I, and I'm I sure Europe's love. excited too. That's sarcasm. <laughs> well, like we've been doing this for thousands of years. Yeah, I'm wondering where they're going to get their hops. Stone's going to have to ship all those hops. So I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, but, well, yeah, they doing they doing a uh, saison de buff because uh, what's a uh, dogfish had just it's it's a collab, and they just did theirs, and I think they're going to do their saison de buff back there as well. Uh, yeah. I know, I know the, I know the. Groundbreaking collabs are going to be fifty bucks uh, towards the the found, you know, the the crown yeah. founding, funding to get those. Uh, yeah, I, I have mixed feeling because I, I I'm with you on the that's kind of a elitist or whatever, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. At at the same time, the side of me that wants to see craft beer thrive, uh, kind of ex, you know excited and happy about it. It's hard. They do. They do make good beer. So watching them grow is is enjoyable. So mm -hmm. and I, and you know now they're. I wish they'd announce where they're going to put that East Coast brewery because, uh, you know everybody in every town still thinks they got a shot. It'd be nice to, to take that suspense away. But, uh, all right. Well, let's move on to the next segment. The next segment is. I hope one of you guys have had this because um, this guy. This was a review, and I picked this a week and a half ago when we thought we were going to have a. Well, last week when we thought we were going to have a show on Sunday night, but we postponed it. But this is still a, the review. It's a review by a guy named John Starodumsky. Uh, he's in the craft beer community on Google+. And he reviewed the Boomslang 
from Rogness Rogness Brewing Company. Anybody heard of that brewing uh -huh. company? Anybody? No. Heard of any no. Of that. So this is a new one for everyone. So so he posted a Google Plus post, and it links That's back cool. to yeah, it links back to his uh, blog. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it's a it's an IPL. It's an India Pale Lager, and that's why I picked it because it's amber in color. I mean, I'm looking right at a picture. Go to the go to the plus. Go to the community. Go to brewguru.com. E r u g r u dot com. You want to share the picture? I could, except that I don't have it set up to do that. So we'll have to just come to the community, and you'll see the links. And um, it talks a it talks it pours an o a bright orange color with a towering head of rocky foam and bright spicy nose of citric orange. Taking a sip, the beer has some chewy caramel malt up front, followed by those wonderful citrus hops. I'm getting a bitter orange rinds and bright juicy orange fruitiness. Some resiny, I've never heard the word resiny in a lager before, so that's kind of <laughs> exciting. Some resiny herbal hop bitterness emerges to, to the last two, but to me this is more orange citrus than anything else. I've had this bottle since November of 13, um, and it is held up wonderfully, but it really seems to be more like an IPA to me than an IPL. There's nothing to distinguish it, though I'm sure it's bottom fermented. So they, um, so he he had some some good comments here, some good style notes to it, and it looks quite delicious. It looks to be a bomber. No, yeah, it's a pint. It's a it's a 22. So uh, so anybody who I don't know where Rogness is, I don't know where he is. He must be in the Northeast because he's got New England Patriots stuff all over his uh, website. Uh, so. Find that brewery, find that beer, and tell us about it in the craft beer community. And that is our review. Thank you, John. And that is our review, and I will reshare that so everybody who comes to the community can find it. And we are to the part of the show where we're going to talk about festivals and new releases. Um, real Lots quick. going on this week. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try and get through it. We're down to just a, two minutes here in the show. So uh, Deschutes Black Butte 26 was released on the 28th of July. Um, that is a beer that is worth seeking out and trading your firstborn for. Uh, Trogues, Trogues Hop Knife Harvest Amber Ale is 87 IBUs. That's a Harvest Ale, an Amber Ale with 87 IBUs. I'd, I'll have to try and find that one. That one sounds interesting. I'll get and, you. And Gillen, well, drink it first and make sure it's good before we make a big deal out of it, right? Uh, Stone eight, Stone 18th and 18th anniversary IPA uh, is coming here second week of August and it's brewed with El Dorado hops. Uh, perennials, uh, that's St. Louis, I think, isn't it? Perennial artisanales. Uh, Savant Blanc Belgian Blonde on wine barrels with grapes. It came out yesterday. Uh, Mother's Brewing will release two of their beers in cans, which is cool. I'm a big fan of the can movement. Uh, Toehead American Blonde and Little Helper IPA. And uh, Goose Island reveals their Bourbon County Stout lineup for this next release on the 28th. They're going to release it on the on Black Friday, on November 28th. Uh, the original brand stout, Proprietors Bourbon County Stout. Don't know what that is. Uh, vanilla, the vanilla rye, the coffee, and the barley wine. And I have not had the vanilla rye, nor I think I have had the coffee and the barley wine. So I like anything with vanilla. Yeah, I love the big vanilla flavors too. So uh, and it looks like Stone is brewing an Alesmith collaboration. Uh, to be announced. That must is that part of their is that part of their rollout of their their thing. I know they're yeah. doing a whole bunch oh, of that was, uh, yeah. That's part of their groundbreaking I think. Yeah. And uh, speaking of collaborations, the beer camp across America has got three stops coming up. The New England editions in Portland, Maine. That's tomorrow. Uh, that's today actually. So I hope you were it's there. It's probably almost done. <laughs> and it's gone now. Yeah, I'm sure they've kicked all the good stuff. Tomorrow is the Mid Atlantic edition in Philly, and then the Southeast edition. Uh, sold out also in Philly on to, in on Philly? Sunday. No, no, sorry, that that is in North Carolina in Millers River. Oh, okay, Mills Mills River, like North Carolina. Mills River, yeah. All right, good. So there, thanks, Gil, for correcting that. Uh, another festival, the Beer Bourbon and Barbecue in Cary, North Carolina, is this weekend, today and tomorrow. Rivers Trails and Ales Festival in Marietta, Ohio. I was just in Ohio last weekend. Oh. I missed it by a week. That's on the seventh and the tenth of August. So that I've got some time to go back. Buffalo Brewfest in Buffalo, amazing, New York, and that's the 8th of August. And that is a rundown for the week. Santa Cruz Beer Week is 4 through 8th. So. Yeah. Woo. Sounds Woo. good. When, when is that? Say that the date again. August 4th through 8th is Santa are you, Cruz Are Beer you week. part of any events, Cindy, out there? Not officially, no, but yeah. I definitely will be a patron. <laughs> you, will, you will participate. You'll be standing in line for the beers, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Beer festivals to be during the week? Does that happen a lot? 
There, you know, it's, it's the, well, I think, yeah, beer, I mean, I'm kind of surprised that it doesn't span a weekend. I'm a little confused by that, but. That is a little weird. But, yeah. Beer week. I mean, if you've got to have a reason to go out for a pint after work, Santa yeah. Cruz Craft Beer Week is a good one. Although you have two jobs, right? You've got a day job and a night job, so. I can fit it in. Yeah, you can. <laughs> there are certain sacrifices that have to be made. <laughs> So, yeah. all right. Well, I think that's going to wrap our show this week. Uh, Cindy, thank you so much. Thank for you, guys. It was nice to talk with you thank guys. You. Yeah, it's go nice to, to craft craftbeverage. Can Ooh. you? There's an RSS feed there, right? So we could subscribe yeah. to it, and that stuff could come in our email. So go to that craft craftbeveragejobs.com uh, and take a look around, and you'll see our content there on their Flipboard. I see it's actually on the blog link. If you click blog, it'll take you to the Flipboard. So that's kind of yeah. cool. And yeah. uh, and you know, until next week, we're going to come back and do another episode of this next week. So until next week, um, find some good friends, pour out the good stuff, and mind your P's and Q's. Cheers.